In this region, what are you offering uh, countries in terms of clean energy storage solutions and, and where are you hoping to commit that capital? Well, what we offer is, is uh, capital and capital that can be quickly deployed. Uh, in fact, the sooner the better. Uh, that capital doesn't earn anything sitting where it is. I need to get it into projects. Mm. And those projects, uh, are, I think, are going to be basically around transition, mm. primarily LNG in places where uh, natural gas is, is uh, not readily available, and around um, probably green ammonia. Mm. I'd like to think that uh, the best way forward from here is is ammonia. Mm. Uh, I like it as a hydrogen carrier. There's more uh, more inter, uh, industry expertise in managing ammonia than well, any other gas. It's used as fertilizer all over the planet every day. So, quick transition. The challenge, though, with green ammonia and green hydrogen, for that matter, is 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 the timeline and getting there, getting to a truly decarbonized or a, a green. Uh, energy uh, solution. That's the challenge. How long do you think that's going to take before we truly see green ammonia, green hydrogen? Yeah, that's that's. That, if you ask me, that's the biggest issue. Yes. Even if I had uh, a source of green ammonia today, yes, I couldn't deliver it to an end user in less than four years from now, mm. and potentially five, depending on the permitting hurdles, because it takes a year of permitting, uh, e uh, EPA or the equivalent and uh, all of the EIAs and local planning, and then three years of construction, and then a year of, uh, roughly a year of commissioning and, um, and uh, proving concept. So you're, three to five years is the minimum, and that's, that's, the, that's the hurdle.